Hey folks, Jairo Jeremy here. Um, what I've got here is a, it's going to be a battery, an earth battery. Um, I have layers of carbon fiber and I have layers of uh, aluminium uh, foil. Um, this is this is quite a bit thicker than your regular um, regular foil. Um, it's still very thin, but found that the regular foil, it, uh, it uh, corrodes too quickly. Alright, so we've got, uh, we've got the first part of the battery uh, hooked up. Um, I've got them stacked together, alternating uh, aluminium and carbon fibre uh, with a layer of cotton or sheet, uh, the cotton sheet in between. And then I've uh, and then I've got them all labelled and um, and hooked up in series. So when I first started out, uh, when I first hooked up everything up, um, I got um, it was pretty pitiful, only about seven hundred milliamps um, and about uh, around ten, uh, sorry, seven hundred millivolts and around ten milliamps. Uh, so it's been a couple of days and now I'm getting uh, about almost 3 volts and it, when I first took the tester up to it uh, it's over it's over 200 milliamps uh, but then it drops down to about 20 milliamps and, and stays and settles on 20 milliamps when I had this all hooked up in uh, parallel uh, I had over a hundred milliamps, a steady hundred milliamps, um, but it was only putting out uh, about half a volt. Uh, so I decided to go with the uh, go with it in series. Now over here, I've got another um, another six plates of uh, aluminium and six uh, sheets of carbon fiber. So I'm going to stack them on top of what I've got here, um, and I'm going to hook those ones up in in series as well. But then I'm going to wire the two together in parallel, um, and that way I should keep the same voltage and double my amper my amperage. Um, now the carbon fiber I'm using is it's just some stuff I had lying around, um, and it's unidirectional. Um, so all the all the fibers are running this way, um, and what I found was that when I put my wires on here, um, once I got away from these fibers um, surrounding the tape, um, it would still make a contact, but it would it would have a higher resistance, and I think that's because all the fibers are running this way. Uh, there's nothing to link them together running that way. Uh, so what I have been doing is uh, is just putting a a strip of copper tape um, along the along the length of it, um, and that that seems to make a big difference. So. All right, so I thought I'd just give a quick demonstration on how I'm putting these things together. Um, so what I've been doing is just alternating uh, carbon fiber and uh, aluminium with a sheet of uh, dielectric in between. Uh, the dielectric I'm using is the is the cotton sheet, obviously, um, and I have been I've been taking quite a bit of time to make sure that everything is uh, stacked directly on top of each other. Um, um, just so that nothing shorts out between the layers, because um, I wouldn't wouldn't want a piece of carbon fiber to come across and short out on here, um, because I think that would. Uh, take away some of the performance of the battery. With the, uh, the electrolyte uh, that I'm using is, is just ash um, out, of the, out of a wood stove and I've just been uh, putting a bit of ash in the bottom of the jar and uh, filling it up with water and then um, leaving that to sit for a few hours um, and so I've been using that. I'm not sure what uh, what the story is with that, um, but it, it, as far as electrolyte goes or how it works, um, I just saw it being done uh, on another video.
video um, and so I figured I'd try it out. It seems like a pretty low cost and expensive way to make a literal light. I found that the uh, that the tape, uh, the copper tape that I was using, uh, once you put this uh, electrolyte on there, it, it stops uh, it stops sticking to anything. Um, so I've actually positioned the wires so that uh, so that they're right next to the to the box of wood there, um, so that they should be sandwiched down in there um, and get a better connection. So yeah, so basically that's it. Um, and I'll just keep going until uh, until this is all together. I'll keep adding electrolyte as I go. Um, once it's in the ground and buried with dirt, the moisture from the dirt and uh, acts as a as an electrolyte. And in theory, you don't have to don't ever have to touch it again. Um, of course. Uh, with this type of battery, I think the aluminium is going to corrode eventually, um, but um, hopefully that won't be for a few months at least. Um, I guess only time will tell. Okay, so I I buried my earth battery uh, outside, um, just down on the down on the dirt down there. Um, I buried it probably about 300 millimeters deep, uh, which is about a foot, and I dumped a bucket of water on top of it. Um, but before I did that, I rewired the, the entire battery uh, into uh, parallel. Um, I left it, I left it hooked up in series overnight, um, and it only only ended up putting out about a volt. Uh, 1.3 volts, I think. And so I figured it, I maybe it might probably be more beneficial to have everything hooked up in series and have over 100 milliamps um, versus having, say, 20 or 40 milliamps, you know, at a volt. Um, so what I'm getting now is um, it's not it's about uh, 460. Uh, millivolts, so it's not quite half a volt. Um, but I am getting a decent amount of amperage from that. Um, so it kind of it kind of sits around 150 or 160, um, which is the most I've had from one of these. Um, so I think if you put uh, maybe three of these down there, you'd probably be getting maybe a you know a volt and a half, which is the same as a double A battery, um, and you're getting a fair you'd be getting a fair fairly good amount of uh, milliamps as well. Um, so yeah, so that's I've, this battery's been in the ground for about two hours now. Um, I'm hoping. You know, with a bit of time, maybe a couple of days, um, that the voltage will increase. Uh, but I'm not really holding my breath. Uh, it seems it seems that if uh, with these capacitor type um, earth batteries, that they don't really seem to produce much more than half a volt. Um, so yeah, but time will tell. So.